Welcome to Lecture 6 of Aerospace Propulsion. Today we're going to talk about propellers for aerospace propulsion applications. We'll look at a performance overview, um, expressions for thrust, power, and efficiency. We'll introduce actuator disk theory, and we'll get some of the governing non-dimensional parameters for propell propeller performance. So a propeller is just a set of blades set around a common shaft um, that are basically just rotating airfoils that produce lift and drag. Fundamentally, they're like any other kind of turbo machinery. The big difference, though, is that they exist in an unconfined flow, right? There's no, uh, nothing that forces a certain amount of air to go through the propeller um, and nothing that prevents flow from sort of spilling around it. Also, the propellers tend to have a relatively small number of blades. You know, the highest that you typically would ever see might be eight, but uh, anywhere from three to six would be the most common uh, number of propeller blades. So the blades are relatively far apart. And this means that they operate a little bit closer to uh, like rotating independent wings than the closely coupled blades in typical turbo machines, the kind that we'll be discussing later in this course. So we can think about them just as a bunch of rotating airflows that produce lift and drag. And if we think about them that way, then we can think about the thrust and the torque that's produced uh, by each sort of uh, section at a given radius r with some thickness dr um, as uh, sort of an element that contributes to the overall behavior. Um, so if we sort of had a cut through the blade here at radius r, we could see uh, our airflow cross section um, the plane of rotation here is this, this, this horizontal line and the, the blade is moving sort of upward. Um, now, the tricky thing here, we see, okay, well, there's some, you know, direction for the zero lift line and we can look at the velocities, but there's this key thing here, alpha i and v i. Um, and what this is, is the induced upwash. So basically this is the fact, this is the, the eff effect of the fact that this blade doesn't exist all by itself. So it's the influence of the other blades and of the previous passing of the same blade. Um, and essentially it changes the effective angle of attack that the, the airfoils see. Now it's actually not in any way trivial to quantify what this induced angle of attack or the induced upwash actually is. If we want to do detailed design of propeller blades, we've, we've got to deal with that. But we're not going to go down that route in this course. But for a moment, if we just assume that we had a way of determining that alpha i, the induced angle of attack, we can see how we would proceed to determine the overall performance of the propeller. So we have these differential elements at different radii, and they all contribute to the forces and moments. Um, and so the differential thrust and the torque uh, are both functions of the airfoil lift and drag. The uh, thrust is mostly str most strongly dependent on the lift, and the torque is most strongly dependent on the drag. Um, but both contribute to, to, to both uh, terms. And this differential lift and drag um, that we see in both these expressions um, are just related to the lift and drag coefficients um, as well as the local sort of velocities. Um, so, you know, if we knew things about the airflow sections and we somehow knew the induced angles of attack, we could use those expressions and we could come up with the overall forces uh, and the moment just via integration along the radius. So the total thrust and the total torque would just be basically uh, obtained by integrating from the inner radius to the outer radius and then summing over the number of blades. Now again, this is kind of notional at this point because we can't do more without determining the actual induced upwash. Instead, we're gonna look at an alternative approach. We're gonna proceed using integral momentum analysis. So we're, here we're gonna think about linear momentum uh, for propellers. So we would set up a control volume. Here's these, this dashed box represents the control volume and its boundaries are very far away from the area of interest. So that's going to tell us that the static pressure is going to be uniform and equal to sort of the free stream value on the entire external surface of this control volume. 
and we'll assume that there's only a change in stagnation pressure for the flow that just goes through the propeller which is the streamlines that are bounded by these black lines. This is the capture stream tube of the propeller. This disc or this line here is the propeller. So then from integral momentum, we get that the, the net force in the x direction, which of course is the thrust, is the integral over the surface of the control volume of just rho ux uh, times uh, the dot product of u dot n, where n is the outward facing normal over, over the surface. So the flight speed is u naught, and that's the, the flow velocity far away. There's a so jet velocity, if you will, the higher velocity downstream of the power, and that we can call ue uh, for exit velocity. And there's going to be a change in static pressure from P1 to P2 across the propeller. There'll have to be some flow entering the control volume from the sides in order to satisfy mass conservation. So from this, could we obtain a net expression for the thrust? We, we can, and um, it's I'd like you to take a moment and try to do this, to come up with actually an expression from thrust fr uh, for thrust from the momentum theorem, um, and make sure that you take into account the flow that's coming in from the sides of the control volume. So think about this for a couple of minutes, and try to come up with an answer for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video.